Hello, hello. Welcome to the Creative Control Room Podcast pre-show. This is the part of the show where we go through and make sure all systems are go. And uh, we check our lighting, we check our cameras, we check our audio, we check all that stuff so that we can provide a better podcast experience for you. You won't find this in the audio version of the podcast. Only right here on YouTube or I guess if you're watching on Twitter, it would be there as well. Um, so right now we're looking at Twitter, Facebook, making sure the pod is up and running. Looks like it is on both. Fantastic. Good. Happy to see that. Okay, let's check audio. Audio looks good there. How's our... Okay, good, good. You know what I didn't do? Let's turn on the cameras. There we go. All right, let's check our angles. Camera two, camera three, good. Everything's looking good. Soundboard's up. Uh, man, what's today? Sunday, June 13th. I wasn't sure. To be honest, if I was going to do an episode today, you may notice that uh, we're running a little bit behind, and I will get into why that is. A hint for that is in the title of today's episode. It starts with a V. Vacation. Cool. Uh, okay, I think we are ready to go. Got some fun stuff planned for today. Should be a good episode. <clears throat> episode 80, here it is. Hello and welcome to episode... <laughs> Vacation Brain. Hello and welcome to episode number 80 of the Wow. I am I'm still I'm still in Utah right now. Hello and welcome to episode number 80 of the Creative Control Room podcast, a show for creators, makers and doers where my goal is to help you make to the max. I am your operator Ryan Hafey, and in this episode, I'm going to recap my recent vacation for you and we're going to do a live photo edit of a photo I took of the Milky Way and we still don't have an intro. I'm not going to rerun the one from last week, the the temporary one cuz quite honestly, I'm thinking of changing it. I know I'm very indecisive. So here's another random sound effect for you. Let's play this one from before. A little audience applause there to welcome you into the show. By the way, if you are new here, thank you for being here. Uh, this is the Creative Control Room Podcast. This is kind of my creative control room, my creative playground. Uh, this is where I dispel all the knowledge that I have accumulated over the years when it comes to photography and video creation, podcasting, live streaming, FPV, uh, and just about everything in between when it comes to the creative process uh, and just uh, content creation in general. Uh, and I also document all the various projects that I happen to be working on as well. So if any of that interests you, this may be the podcast for you. So if you are here watching right now and you're into any of that stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening. And follow me on social media at Ryan Havey on Instagram and Twitter. Okay. It is Sunday, June 13th. And um, literally, quite literally an hour and a half ago, um, I got home from a short weekend trip with the family to... Uh, it was Wildflower Resort, which is just outside of Zion National Park in Utah. And if you've ever been to Zion, you know that it's freaking beautiful over there. Um, the mountains just, uh, you know, we, we wanted to, we needed to get away. It was one of those things where you don't really realize that you need to get away until you get away. Um, and then you realize how badly you needed it. Because we, other than... Um, you know, traveling for work. Uh, I haven't gone anywhere with my family for over a year just because of the pandemic and all that. So yeah, we just, uh, we decided we'd do a quick weekend trip. Um, it's going to get, it's going to start getting pretty busy for my day job here soon, uh, or especially over the summer. So we figured, okay, now's the time to just get away and go do something, get out of Las Vegas, get out of this house uh, so we did, and where we chose to go is a place called Wildfire Resort, Wildfire Resort, and it's um, just shy. If you're coming from Las Vegas, it's, it's on the south side of Zion National Park. Uh, if you want to go to Zion from there, it's about a 20-minute drive. Um, but it's a cool resort because I guess the 
term that everyone's using for this type of resort is glamping. So you, and I'll show some pictures of it later. You'll kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just pull it up now because part of what I was going to do today was show off some of the photography from the trip anyway. So let's, what is that? That is not what I wanted. What's this? Well, that's that screen. Why is it changing to that screen? Let me see here. I got to update this. 4K display. Nope, wrong display. Let's change that. There we go. I think it's this one here. Boom. So now we should be good. Got it. Okay, so now we have Lightroom up. And uh, we'll just go through some of these photos today. So the plan today, by the way, is um, to kind of recap some of the photos, recap the trip, talk a little bit about all that, that all that, um, and uh, and then we will uh, we'll do a live photo edit. And I'm just being honest, didn't prepare a ton for this because I'm still on vacation in my mind. But we're gonna get through this, and we're gonna have fun. We're gonna learn a thing or two. So let's let's go. So this was um, just kind of starting from the top, and these are not all the photos I took. Just one of the ones that I rated. Um, that uh, let's go to this camera. These are just all the ones that I rated as ones that I want to um, edit later. So this is just, just kind of a, we, so our, our bungalow, which is the little hut that we stayed in, is right outside of this little open area with some grass and a fire pit uh, and the swing set with this little thing with a hammock in it. It's kind of a fun, cool place to relax. Another shot of that. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't edited any of these photos, by the way, so these are all unprocessed and just whatever came out of camera. Another shot of my wife and daughter. There we go. Um, okay, we can get back to some of the wider shots there. Shot of my daughter again. And you can kind of see some of the bungalows there in the background. Um, and that's what we stayed in. There is my son. You can see my orange car behind to the left of, um, to our left, to his right. And the, uh, the little hut that I'm parked next to is the bungalow that we stayed in. And I don't know if I took any sh photos inside of it with this camera. There you go. This is a better shot of it. It's just, it's like a tiny home. Uh, inside it has bunk beds with two full mattresses on it. It's got another queen mattress. It's got um, a microwave. It's got a fridge, full sink, uh, shower. The water pressure is a little bit less than you would get at a regular hotel. But there's a full shower in there, um, you know, toilet, all that kind of stuff. It's essentially just a hotel room, um, but sort of isolated into its own little tiny house setup. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, my son likes to make funny faces. Here's a better shot of kind of from the front porch of the bungalow there. And you can see all the different bungalows spread out throughout the, uh, the resort area there. Some really nice views. Um, my wife and my daughter. And then here's uh, some shot of more. You can actually see on this one. Let's see if I zoom in a little bit. Um, you can see in the background there, they have some other options. So you don't have to stay in a bungalow. You could also, if you wanted to stay in a covered wagon, which does not have any, um, spoke audio, Robert, what's going on? Hope you had a great vacation. We did, man. It was, it was much needed. We have some covered wagons in the background there. You have these, which are, I think called yurts. I forget, but just basically another, just a, a glorified tent. And, uh, yeah, and then they have uh, restrooms there if you wanted to stay in those where you could go down and just use the restrooms more like more like camping. Um, but very nice location. Get another cool shot from the balcony there. This one obviously doesn't look super uh, super pretty because I haven't processed it yet. But this was a, a cool sunset shot. I imagine we could probably just do like a quick contrast adjustment here and maybe get pull a little bit more out of this. There you go. Look at that. Just with a few quick tweaks uh, of contrast, highlights, and shadows. And obviously, I'll do a little bit more of this, but you can get, a, you can get an idea of some of the views there. There's a farm across the road there that's got some horses and things like that. Uh, let's see. Another version, a few more versions of those. Here's us around the fire pit. So this was actually a bucket list item for especially my oldest daughter was to sit around a campfire and uh, make s'mores. And one of the cool things about the resort is that when you check in as part of your fee, uh, you get a s'mores pack nightly where they give you three skewers and some chocolate and graham cracker and marshmallows. And they do a, uh, a fire from 
It's like 7.30 to 10 nightly, and you can just kind of sit around and, and make s'mores. So they got to do that, and they had a lot of fun there. Happy girl with her s'more stick. And uh, this is kind of what things look like at night. Very pretty. Uh, so this is when we got into some of these star photos. So uh, let's see. Is there, a, is there a photo of it? There might be back here. Kind of. So there's this trail. If I don't know if you can see this on the uh, with, with my mouse here. But off to the right, just off frame, there's a trail that kind of goes up this hill there. And they were saying when I checked in, they're like, oh, you know, um, you can – a lot of people like to go sky, sky stargazing up there and like take photos and stuff at night. Uh, what I didn't realize is there's, there's, I mean, in the daytime, the trail looks pretty unassuming, uh, but at night it's completely dark and it's kind of steep. And I took my kids on there and it was a little freaky, uh, but I managed to only get two quick photos. This one's actually a little bit more out of focus, at least on the stars. And I wanted it to be, here's another um, shot. Uh, so I only got two photos there before we decided to go back to safer spaces. Oh, let me bring this back here. There we go. So you can see these two, one and two. Uh, this one looks a little bit more blue cause I processed it a little bit. I didn't do a ton with it, but I, I tweaked it a little bit. Um, here's another one and you can start to see the Milky Way coming through on this one here. We were, if you look at a, a light pollution map, we were just at the edge um, of kind of like the city, the Saint of the city of St. George emits quite a bit of light and where we were, we were just kind of on the edge of that. So we weren't in complete darkness, but we were definitely dark enough to where we could do a, um, a shot of the Milky Way. And by the way, too, um, I also brought this camera, I keep forgetting which camera I'm at. I brought this camera, camera, which is a Canon AE one. Uh, this is a third party lens on it, which is a 28 millimeter lens. Um, I brought this one because this is my only film camera that has a wider lens on it. Don't have these photos yet, back yet, by the way. Um, and I only took 20, 20 photos on it so far. So, uh, But I always love taking film photos, so I'm looking forward to getting those developed. And when I do, I will show you all what that looks like. Anyway, back to the star photos. So uh, I wanted to pick one of these shots. Here's another one. Down here in, in the bottom is where some uh, uh, traffic is driving by. Um, Here's another shot. And you'll notice, by the way, you see all these lines going through. Those are all airplanes, and they're very annoying. And it turns out that there's a lot more airplanes in the sky that you might think. I mean, just in this photo alone, you got one, two, three, four. Looks like five in the distance there. Um, here's another shot. One, two, three. Uh, I can't tell if that's one, four. Yeah, crazy. But I think this is the photo that I want to edit for you all. Um... But before we do that, just to kind of uh, recap all the details of the trip and everything. So, yeah, that was the resort. The resort was great. Quite honestly, I could have stayed at the resort and just chilled there for a while. It was hot, but it was like, you know, you sort of knew that going in that it was going to be a little warm, so we didn't worry about it too much. Uh, I tried to go to Zion. Zion was packed. There were so many cars. It's hard to find parking. So instead of par you know, parking, taking a shuttle, going in, and then exploring through Zion, we just decided to go... Uh, do the drive through and kind of get some video and stuff out of the car. So we drove through and then back through and there's a lot of really cool views in, in this tunnel that you go through. Um, very, very pretty. We've gone to Zion before. It was a few years back. Um, but this time we decided it would be a better use of our time. To just kind of drive through, check it out, see the sites and then go try to find some other things to do. So we went back to our bungalow and, uh, because really we only had one full day, which was yesterday. So we got there Friday. Friday we just kind of chilled. And then Saturday all day is when we uh, decided to do our activities. So we got back to the bungalow, and then we realized that two minutes down the road was this uh, place where you could rent uh, tubes, and you could uh, tube down the Virgin River, which we did. Didn't get any photos of that because I didn't want to bring out my camera. But Virgin River is um, – it was a little bit low, but it was kind of cool. I mean, you go there, you pay a fee, they give you a tube – they shuttle you to the start start location. They say, all right, have fun. And then you just kind of go down this this river until you reach a point where there's someone else that meets you there. It's, I, it's, it, you're, you're floating down the river for about an hour. My kids loved it. I, um, I kept hitting the bottom because I'm heavier than my kids and the water level was low. But it was, good. It was a good time. We, we had fun with that one. Came back, went and had some dinner. 
and then the next day packed up and, and came back home. But it was a much, much needed refresher uh, for everyone. And I think that's kind of, I think that's what we want to do going forward is kind of like some mini vacations every now and then. Just go for two, three days at a time. Just a quick little reset to kind of get out of this environment, get out of the usual, break that chain a little bit. But it was great. We had fun. So back to this. So let's do some astrophotography editing, shall we? By the way, um, just to kind of give some info as to how this was shot. So when you're shooting star photography, you you need to use a long shutter because stars, uh, even though you can see them in the sky, it, they, they are not very bright on your sensor. If you just took a regular old picture of the sky at night, you're probably not going to see too many stars just because it's, it's so dark. So in this case, for these photos, I was using a shutter speed of 25 seconds. That's not 1 25th of a second. That's 25 seconds. Uh, along with a super wide angle, I had uh, my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So whenever you shoot star photography, it's best to shoot wide if you can. It's also best to shoot with a wide aperture. Uh, so in this case, I used a, um, it has a, the max aperture on this lens that I was using was a f2.8. So I shot at 16 millimeters, f2.8 aperture. So wide open, letting in as much light as I possibly can. ISO uh, in this case was 2500 and then shutter speed of, of 25 seconds. So obviously if you're going to shoot astrophotography, you need to make sure that you have a tripod with you. I, I don't have it around me right now, but all I, the only tripod I brought was like this little small rig one that's about this tall. It's sturdy, but it doesn't allow me to get over some of these shrubs. So that's why basically in all these photos that I took, uh, you can see some shrubbery or something in the foreground. And then that's just because I couldn't get the camera much higher off the ground, but you get the idea. So, uh, and then as far as white balance goes, I typically shoot astrophotography. Where did I do this one? I think is it 30, yeah, 3,700, um, uh, Kelvin for this shot. And, um, yeah, you just have to, what I usually do is I set a two second timer for the shutter. So I'll, I'll, uh, get everything framed up. I will set my focus to infinity basically, because it's kind of hard to get a focus on the stars and you can kind of see some of the stars here. Let me go back. There we go. You can see how some of the stars here are a little orby, which is an indication that it's not, you know, focusing exactly on the stars, um, or exactly on infinity, but it's, it's close enough. Um, but uh, yeah, you got to just basically, so I'll, I'll have a two second timer, press the shutter, let that two second timer run. And that basically removes any camera vibration. So for example, if you set your shutter to 25 seconds and you just hit the shutter, you might jolt the camera a little bit and that is going to be enough to show up in your shot. So the recommendation is either to use like a remote shutter of some kind or to um, just set kind of a timer so that you can press the shutter button and then any camera vibration can stop up until the, the exposure starts to take place. So let's get right into it. Let's edit this photo. Uh, and by the way, I'm no astrophotography, um, master or, or expert by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, I tried to edit a, a, one of my star photos when I was at Zion, and I wasn't happy with how the results came back. So take all this with a grain of salt, but we're going to do our best to try to bring some of this um, this detail out of here. So first things first, I really want to try to get the stars to pop. I'm going to crank up the contrast so that the bright parts are bright, dark parts are darker, and then I'm going to I'm gonna bump up the whites. And right away, you can already kind of see... The star is coming out. I'm going to bring, let's see, if I hold the, if you hold the alt key with any of these basic tone adjustments, like for example, with blacks, you can kind of see where the details being lost. I want to bring the blacks up a little bit until, you know, I don't want to lose too much detail. Basically, I want to get it right to the point where you start to see detail going down quite drastically. And I'll stick about right there. Okay. And then I might bring the shadows. I bring the shadows down. A, actually, no. I'm going to bring, you know what? No, we're going to do it with a filter later because I'm worried about this foreground down at the bottom. I don't want to lose too much detail in there, but we can also come back later and add a graduated filter to bring some of that out. But of course, 
we're looking at the stars here too. We're not too focused on what's going on down at the bottom. Next, I'm going to crank up this clarity a little bit. That's really going to start to bring out the definition in those stars. Um, maybe bring up, nah, I don't want to go, if you go too hot with texture, then it just looks super unrealistic. So I'm going to keep texture kind of low. Vibrance, see if we can start to bring out some of the colors in that Milky Way. And I may even play with the temperature slider a little bit because I, I don't want it to be so incredibly blue. All right, so I'm going to go maybe around 4,100 or so. Let's stick there. Okay. Might put a few points on the curve here and play with this. Maybe get a little S-curve going to add a little bit more contrast, bring some more out of the whites. Let's see. That looks okay. Let me bring this down a little bit. So then if I press the, I guess this would be the backsplash button, right? You can see before, after. So before, after, we've already brought out quite a bit of detail. Um, might bring the clarity down just a little bit. And uh, bring up the vibrance. A lot of this is just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. All right, I'm going to come down here now. I might actually bring down the blues a little bit in the saturation, just so I don't want to go all the way down because then obviously you have black and white. But I, what I don't want is all of these stars to come through as blue. So we're going to bring it down just a little bit. Uh, sharpening here, I might bring the sharpening up just a little bit, and then I'm also going to use the masking slider. And again, if you hold the Alt button when you're masking, you can basically reduce you can re reduce what's being sharpened in the image. So as I bring it up, you can see that less and less is being sharpened. You don't want all the extra noise in the sky to be sharpened. So we're going to increase the mask until you see pretty much just the stars coming through, maybe around like you know, 46, 45. By the way, this also gives you an interesting look at how many stars are actually in the sky when you do that. That's crazy. But anyway, there you go. We'll bring that up. And I'm also going to add a little bit of noise reduction, maybe go up to about 10. You don't want to go too high here because the more noise reduction you apply in this case, the more uh, of the detail you're going to get rid of. Also want to add remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. You can typically get a lot of exposure uh, you know, exposure back, and especially in the corners, um, at least with some of these Sony lenses, but you can see the big difference there. Very cool. Uh, I'm also going to add a little bit of a vignette. I know I'm kind of undoing what I just did with those profile corrections, but this is going to help bring the attention into the middle and towards uh, the Milky Way. Let's see, maybe play with some of these. Ooh, I like that. I can add a little purple into the sky by playing with some of these calibration sliders okay cool cool maybe anything there not really okay good so this is a good place to start but now what i want to do is uh, i want to bring this milky way out a little bit more so i want to uh, go to the brush adjustments over here at the top uh, I'm going to hold the Alt key and click where it says reset so that everything is being reset here. And actually, I'm going to crank up the clarity just so... No, you know, I'm not going to do that. Hold on. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Where is it? Um, hang on. I want to increase the size of the mask here. I want to make the feathering a little bit bigger. And then... Oh. There we go. Show selected mask overlay. So I want to see what I'm doing. But basically what I want to do here is I'm going to go through and I want to select, kind of just brush over where the Milky Way is in the image. And I want it to be nice and soft. Because, and you'll see why that is here shortly. So anyway, let's kind of do this here. Expand a little bit more there. Okay. All right, so I'm going to turn off that mask overlay. And now we can start playing with this. So I'm going to increase the clarity again a little bit more over the um, over the Milky Way there. Um, let's play around with the highlights. I don't want to go too crazy. Actually, I'm going to zero that out. I want to add a little dehaze. I don't want to go too crazy here, just a little bit. And this is going to kind of accentuate some of the darker areas and create a little more contrast within um, the Milky Way. And I'm also going to go down here where this little color effect is. Click on that. And if you sort of stay to the bottom portion 
of this color range here, you can play around and see kind of what looks here. I'll just go extreme and kind of go up the top. And I'm obviously not going to go that crazy because you can see where the, uh, the blending stops. But if you stay, if you pick a color, you can see how it can add some different uh, color into that. But we're going to go down towards this portion. And sometimes I, I like using orange and red. Other times I like kind of going over here and adding a little bit of blue and purple into it. So let's see. I don't know. What do we think? What do we like better? This or something more like that? I think that might be too much purple. Let's give it a little contrast and stay kind of in the orangish yellow realm. We'll go right there. Okay, cool. So once again, before, after, before, after. And you can kind of see how that transforms that there. Um, I'm going to bring the dehaze down slightly. Okay. And then I want to go get a graduated filter here. And I'm going to, you know what? No, I lied. Uh, I was going to apply a graduated filter uh, along the bottom portion of this here, but it actually might just be easier to do a new, uh, a new brush. And I'm going to turn on the mask there and just kind of brush over here. Brush with something soft. You don't want to go into the star portion because you're going to see kind of where the two meet. And like you'll see the mask if you try to go too high up. So I usually leave a little bit down beneath there. Okay. Turn off that mask overlay. And then I'm going to apply, uh, I'm going to turn up some shadows, maybe turn up the exposure. And I don't want to go too crazy here. I don't, I don't need a ton of light on this foreground. I just want to be able to see enough to have a little bit of context. You know what I mean? Um, and then I'm going to turn up noise reduction on this because I was noticing some um, little specks of just sort of artifacts from the long exposure and things like that. But I'm actually okay with this. Maybe bump saturation... Yeah, bump saturation up a little bit. Cool. So let's get out of the brush. We'll go back here. I don't need to do that. And uh, I might actually, there we go. Let's bump up the exposure a little bit more here. Let's check our black levels. We Kind of bring those down a little bit, I think. Let's check our, let's play with the shadows a little bit. Boom. It's looking pretty cool. Maybe if we play with the dehaze, just to get a little bit more of the darks out of. See if we can go. <laughs> that's a little too extreme. But I think something like that is pretty good. And then what we can try to do. Let's see if this will work. I'm going to use the uh, spot removal tool and let's see if we can get rid of these should be pretty easy to get rid of some of these little um, airplane trails okay that one worked out let's try this one uh, okay that one worked out this one may be more of a challenge but let's see what happens uh, it's not bad I'm going to move it a little bit farther away so it doesn't look like it's duplicated so close okay not bad let's back up oh we got one more uh airplane trail over here uh, okay let's see how that looks cool i'm good with that back it up and uh yeah i guess there you there you go there's a shot of the night sky. I might even apply a little bit more vignette on this, and I might feather this out a little bit more. But I don't hate that. Um, vibrance might bring up saturation just a little bit more. And, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? How's that look? I don't hate it. I don't love it. I still got some work to do on my astrophotography. Uh, but it is... A fun activity if you have an opportunity to get out and do some astrophotography i highly recommend it 
Um, there was one other thing I was going to mention about it too that I can't remember. Oh, well. But yeah, astrophotography is fun, man. Go, just go somewhere super quiet. Just go relax. Um, bring some snacks. Bring a friend. Bring a tripod. Set up. You know, get some shots. Um, and the, the great thing about astrophotography is when you hit the, the shutter button, you have 25 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever it is to just wait and just kind of, you, you're sort it's, you sort of get rid of that instant gratification that you get from normally just shooting in digital. Um, you know, when you shoot photography, astrophotography, you have to be patient and the payoff is usually, especially when you get the shot, when you, when it's framed up just right and you've got the perfect exposure settings, the payoff is awesome. And actually that was, um, what I was going to mention, um, with, as far as your shutter speed. So when I mentioned you, you need to shoot with a wide angle lens, or that's, that's typically the best option. You know, shoot with a wide angle lens. Um, and the wider the lens, the longer your shutter speed can be. So one of the rules of thumbs that they, that they say is take 500 divided by your focal length or your equivalent focal length. So for example, if you have a 16 millimeter lens, on a crop sensor camera, that's going to be closer to like 24, 25 millimeters. So in that case, you would take 500 divided by 24. Uh, in my case, I was using a full frame sensor. I had a 16 millimeter uh, lens. And if I take 500 divided by 16, that gives you roughly 31, which, which means that I can keep my shutter open for about 31 seconds, anything beyond that, and you will start to see star trails. So obviously the earth rotates around an axis. And if you were just to leave your shutters, let's say hypothetically, you left your shutter open for, you know, three minutes. When you look at your photo, you're going to see star trails. You're, all the stars in the sky are not going to look like little points. They're going to look like uh, little trails. And that's because you left the shutter open for a long time. With tighter, with more telephoto lenses, you are zoomed in much more on the stars, so you have a shorter amount of time that you can keep the shutter open before you see the trails versus with wide-angle lenses because it's much less noticeable with a wide-angle lens um, because everything's just so wide and spread out. So just kind of a food for thought on that one. But yeah, man, that was the trip. Uh, can't wait to get back. Uh, I don't know if we'll go back to that exact resort, but we definitely want to get back to that area. I think just sort of, again, getting out of Vegas, slowing down a little bit, connecting a little bit more with nature is uh, is good for us and everyone, um, you know, to a degree. So, all right, I think uh, I think we're good with this one for today. Uh, thank you very much for being here. If you are still with me and if you enjoyed what you saw, it'd be awesome if you would hit that subscribe button wherever you happen to be watching or listening and follow me on social media at Ryan Havey on Instagram and Twitter. But for now, I'm going to get all this one done, and uh, we will see you in the next one. So keep on creating, making, and doing, and uh, bye-bye, fade to black.